23 years into democracy, Graham Sound faces a water crisis driven by aging infrastructure, incorrect water purification methods, and the drought. Residents who can afford to do so find alternative measures, while those who can't suffer the consequences. Retired lecturer, Mr. Martin Davis is drinking what has become a luxury for most, clean water. And cheers, I can drink it. Our investigation began with PhD student Matthew Weaver, who spoke about the social and geographic factors that contribute to the water crisis in Grahamstown. There's a social factor with um, quite a high population, high unemployment rate, people not able to pay for water. Um, and then there's um, geographical issues. So the topography of Grahamstown is quite, it's a bowl. So you've got areas down at the bottom that experience um, high pressure and then areas high up experiencing low pressure. So you've got these pressure differences in the, in the reticulation system and compounded with an old reticulation system that cause, would cause leaks. Um, then environmental or hyd hydrological, we are in a semi-arid part of the country. Um, Gramstown experiences frequent droughts, so um, water rainfall is limited and our dams are just, we just don't have enough rainfall in our catchment areas to supply the whole town. The pharmaceutical department at Rhodes University has conducted a number of tests on the water quality. One of the researchers is Tandi Sangroana who is doing her master's in pharmaceutical chemistry. Her research is dedicated to community engagement with grade 9 school pupils who conduct water testing in their homes. Those reagents that we put in this, we call them hydrogen sulfide. So the whole kit itself is called a hydrogen sulfide because of those reagents, those chemicals we put in here. You saw it back at home, you tested the water. After you tested the water, if the water is somehow dirty, what's going to happen is that you are going to have black neck, and some of you did actually have the black name. That means that your water quality is dirty. It means that you have fecal coliform contamination. You know you fecal coliform contamination. Yes. Yes, that's from her research, Rutandi Swa identified Vugani as a problem area. In the event that water is contaminated, Tandiswa provided homemade solutions to the cleaning of water for consumption. The safest one that I can think of is boiling the water if you are dealing with the microbial crisis. Um, you can also use bleach, like a teaspoon of bleach per um, liter of water that you're drinking. And then you just let it settle um, and then after some time you can just drink it after that. However, Mbulelo Lipile raises the challenges that people face in following the water cleaning instructions. It's costly on the other side because by boiling that water you need electricity. That's another implication of a cost. The Fairview Spring, located less than 10 minutes outside of the CBD, is an alternative for getting clean water. The water from the spring is clean and free to collect. Mostly people go there, but it's not easy for the people on the township. It's too far from the township, so you need a transport to go there in order to carry that water because water is not, it's not easy, water is heavy. According to the Constitution, everyone has the right to sufficient water. Every person has the right to 25 litres of clean water per day. If then the water quality is not good, then the municipality can be taken for a legal suit because there is a South African national standards. I think that's 241. It says the municipality had to make sure it delivers the clean drinking water that it passes that the requirements of the South African national standards. The water um, often does not comply with SANS, 
that's the South African national standards for water, 0241. Um, it does not comply in a number of different characteristics. One of the main characteristics where it doesn't comply and where it um, is said to affect health, these are the government regulations, is with the level of aluminium that uh, we find in the water at times. It exceeds both class one and class two levels. However, due to the water crisis, essential services have not been properly delivered. The formation of the concerned citizens of Makana was formed as a response to this crisis. Mr. Bryn Brody, the lawyer representing the committee, summarizes the issues faced by the community. Um, it's spending more money every month than it's getting in. The debt has got to such a level now that unless central government helps, it's going to, get, it's going to go from bad to worse. And the next crisis that's going to hit is that they're not going to be able to pay salaries of their own staff. And when that starts, you're going to have demonstrations, uh, which are also going to be problematic. Just as an example, the debt for Eskom is 50 million. The, the debt for the Amatola Water was 50 million. So just between those two organizations, they have 100 million. And they can't cover the debt. And Amatola is now pulled out. And Eskom keeps on threatening on cutting off the electricity. And for those citizens in the township like Mbulelo, very little has been done to improve the situation. As with any service delivery issue, the ones most affected remain the poor. The question left unanswered is, is Makana's municipality infringing on the rights of its citizens?